come to researching your family history using Ancestry Library Edition and Heritage Quest. My name is Pam and I work in the Adult Services Department here at the library. Um, I wanted to mention before we get started that um, this is the first time I'm doing a webinar, so there might be uh, some glitches and hopefully, hopefully not, um, hopefully everything will run smoothly. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to apologize in advance. And I did want to let you know that we are uh, recording this and it'll be available on YouTube just in case you miss some parts or you want a, a little refresher, you'll be able to go on to YouTube and watch this. Uh, I also wanted to let you know sometimes when I talk for a long period of time, uh, my voice starts to get a little hoarse and uh, if you're having trouble hearing me, please um, let us know in the chat and I'll try to speak up. Uh, and I wanted to tell you before we start that unfortunately I am not a genealogist, but at the end of this presentation, I will provide you with information on how you can get free help from genealogist and research specialist. Uh, but what I will be doing today is discussing some of the essential tools and elements that will get you started and give you a base for launching your research using these two databases. Um, if there are questions regarding these databases um, that I cannot answer, I will be very happy uh, to get back to you later. Um, I also wanted to let you know that typically Ancestry Library Edition can only be accessed within the library, but because of the pandemic, it is available at home through the end of March. Um, uh, now, Heritage Quest, on the other hand, has always been available from home and will continue to be so. Uh, so let's get started with our demonstration. And today we'll start with Ancestry. So um, on our homepage, lyallibrary.org, you can see our toolbar here. And if you click on databases, our databases are listed in alphabetical order. And so Ancestry Library Edition is our first one. Uh, if we scroll down, you'll be able to see a Heritage Quest down here. Now, if you're at home and you're clicking on this, um, you're gonna to have to enter your library card number and your uh, PIN number, which is the last four digits of your home phone number. But because I'm in the library, it'll take me directly there. So uh, what is uh, Ancestry Library Edition? It's a collection of many different data sets that can be searched simultaneously, or you can narrow your search to a particular data set. The content of this database comes from libraries, archives, and special collections from all over the world. And many collections include images of original documents. There are over 10,000 unique data sets and more are added each week. So this is uh, not a static or closed collection. It is constantly evolving and growing. So what's the difference between the Ancestry Library Edition and the personal at home one you see um, on the TV commercials? Let me just show you over here. Of course, ours is free and there is a charge for there. So um, what I would suggest um, to use ours as much as you can. And then if you feel you need to um, um, get a membership with them, you can do that. There is a 14 day free trial. Um, so you can do that also. Let me go back to my ancestry. Okay, now there are some other features that are different uh, between those two databases. Uh, the two most widely used ones are the message board, which is a way to communicate with other members. With the library edition, you cannot post a reply on the board, but I will show you how you can use it later. And creating a family tree is, which is a way which to share with other uh, members of your family 
but the library edition, you cannot create a family tree, but if one is made public, you can view it. Um, there is some differences in content, but just as a note, far less than 5% of the total collection in Ancestry.com is not accessible in the library edition. So a pretty small percentage. One of the big ones that aren't in uh, the library edition is the historical newspaper collection. But we do have um, the Chicago Tribune, some historical newspapers that goes back to 1849. We've got the Wall Street Journal that goes back to 1889. Uh, the Washington Post that goes back to 1877. And we have some Civil War era newspapers. Uh, we also do not have the obituary collection. Uh, you might have noticed this on the homepage where it says obituaries from newspapers.com. Uh, uh, what that actually is, is an index. It's not the actual obituary. I just wanted to show you. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at this record. It's not the real Abraham Lincoln, but as you could see, it's not the obituary that we tip, uh, typically think about, uh, but it does tell you where you can get a copy of the obituary. It says Herald and Review, uh, publication date, September 13th, uh, 2008. Uh, if you went to this link over here, uh, would take you to newspaper.com, but of course you'd have to sign up for that and pay for it. Um, but if you contact us, there's a good chance uh, that we could contact the Decatur Public Library. Uh, most of the newspapers are on microfilm, so we could possibly get you uh, a copy of that obituary. Okay, let's go back to the home page and um, let's get started with a few search tips. Being able to search for variations and names can be important to your search. So I just wanted to show you if you clicked here, begin searching, and then up here where it says all categories, uh, it'll take you to the same place. When you're doing this, you're searching over all 10,000 data sets. So I'm gonna start with the first name and I'm gonna start to type Sarah. And what pops up over here is this little exact here. And you can decide if you want Sarah or sounds like Sarah, uh, which might be Sarah with an H. Uh, similar might be, um, let's say you put Will, but it could be William or Bill or somebody's initials. Now the same with the last name. I'm gonna start to type Smith and this exact comes up. And it could be um, sounds like Smith, so Smith with the E at the end, or similar Smith, S-M-Y-T-H-E, or sound X is uh, when there's an alternate spelling like S-K-I for Polish names or S-K-Y. Um, I also wanted to show you if uh, you have a maiden name, you can type two last names in the last name field. And there's also wild cards. So let's say I'm gonna start to type Anne and the wild card is an asterisk. And so that's gonna give you um, Anne, Anne with the E, Anna or even Annabelle. And then if you, another wild card is the question mark. And if that's just one letter of the name um, you want to change. So that's going to give you a Hanson, H-A-N-S-O-N -S and H-A-N-S-E-N. -S -E okay. All right. So um, a place your ancestor might have lived and I'm going to start to type DuPage County. And I'll click here and again, 
the exact two, and you might choose just DuPage County, or you might say DuPage County and adjacent counties because as we all know, the county boundaries have changed over the years, um, state and adjacent state because those boundaries have also changed. Uh, the birth year, I'm gonna put uh, 1850. Again, you can click on this. You could say exact to 1850 or uh, minus or plus one year, minus or plus two years, five years, 10 years. And then there's a little calculator over here. Just um, let's say you know that uh, Ann was 18 years old in uh, let's say 1863, um, and then it's gonna fill that birth year in for you. All right, now if you wanna narrow your search down even more, we're gonna go over here where it says show options. And so if you know where Anne might've been born, you could fill that in um, when she was married, where she was married, uh, when she passed away, where she could have lived, um, when, when she came into the country, when she left, there was military duties, and you can narrow it down even more if you know who her father was, mother, sibling, spouse, or child. And of course, if you decide you don't want to need that, you could just um, X out here. Um, this could be occupation or any kind of keyword. Uh, I'm gonna put um, World War II, and you wanna put those in parentheses because uh, it treats it as a phrase instead of individual words. So that narrows it down quite a bit also. You could also put gender, and if you know the nationality, you could put Italian, Irish, Polish, and also the last thing they also suggest to do is swap um, names. So put, uh, let's say Smith for the first name and Anne for the last name. And they suggest doing this just because of uh, poor record keeping. All right, so let's go back to the homepage. All right. Um, Let's look at the message board. As I uh, mentioned before, you cannot post or reply on a message board, but uh, let's take a look here. I'm going to put in um, a town of Fairmont and a surname of Hatch. And if you live in Lyle, uh, you might know that Hatch uh, family was one of the original settlers here. So I'm gonna click on that. And then I'm gonna click on Hatch over here. And of course you could read all the replies, but what I wanted to show you over here is somebody actually put their email address so you can connect with them um, through that way. All right, the Learning Center, the Learning Center um, it tells you what's new uh, in this database. Um, it's um, giving you some research guides and tips and tricks on how to use this database. Let's say uh, you're interested in finding your German ancestors. You could just click on that. And then it um, produces a PDF that you can print and just help you um, with some information about your, your ancestors. Let's go back. All right. And there are some maps. And I'm gonna click on Illinois here. Okay, and it just does show you all the um, counties here. And let's say you're interested in um, finding some vital records and you can continue here. And this just gives you some information about what vital records are, what type of vital records you can find. Uh, this one says right here, birth and death were not generally recorded at the county level until 1877. 
So, and also if you scroll down, you can link out to some Cook County records, um, Illinois marriage records. All right. Let's go back over here. And then charts and forms. Uh, these are blank forms or templates that you can download and you could use them to help you um, keep your records organized and keep track of your research. So all you'd have to do is click on that and then you'd be able to print an ancestral chart. Let's go back. And also they have blank census forms. I'm gonna click on one of these. And as you'll see later, as we look at some of these um, census, they're sometimes hard to read. And by the time you interpret uh, what was written down, it might be easier for you just to fill, fill out your own blank census form. Let's see if I can this over. All right. So let's go back. And then new collections. Now the new collections is the same as um, the card catalog. So you see the card catalog here. Um, card catalog is in alphabetical order but new collections is showing you everything that's been new or updated first. So as you can see right here, South Carolina um, birth records were just updated uh, yesterday on the 7th. And you could see these New York marriage records were just updated uh, on the 4th. So as I mentioned before, um, this um, database is constantly evolving and growing. And as you can see, there's over 10,000 data sets in this database. All right, uh, I just wanna talk real quick about this homepage. Sometimes you look at a homepage and they look overwhelming. Uh, as I mentioned before, begin searching is the same as um, this all category search. Over here is where you can find information on how to send your documents home. Um, I'm gonna show you that in a few minutes. It's very simple, but if you wanted to review it, you can. And these are the four main databases that people use. And as you can see here, we click on search. So census and voter lists is the same as here. Vital records is birth, marriage and death records, military is here and immigration records are here. And then we already said card catalog is new collections there. So um, let's start with the US Census. I'm gonna click here. And the US Census data uh, covers uh, the US, Canadian, UK coverage in the 1930 Mexican National Sentence Census. Uh, the information found on census records uh, vary from year to year. There's a lot of great information on there. And I'm going to put my aunt Caroline and her maiden name is Carosa. And her married name was Kricos. Except I spelled it wrong. All right, and I know she was born in Italy. All right. Okay. So this is her here. So I'm gonna click on here. And um, all the information is laid out really nicely here. So at this point, you can print this. So you can just click and print. And as I said, this is laid out very nicely. 
or this is where you can send this record home. So all you have to do is click send document, enter your email twice and send email. If you send 30 records home in one day, you're only gonna get one email. It's called your discovery page from Ancestry. Your discovery page holds 300 records. Uh, once you hit that limit, it's gonna get rid of your oldest uh, records. So it's as simple as that. Um, I always tell everybody though, that they should look at the original document uh, most of the time, maybe not in this case, um, it gives you so much more information. You know, this is probably hard to see. But um, first of all, at the very bottom here, well, you, first of all, you could see that Caroline's name is highlighted and then her whole family is also highlighted. But at the bottom over here, you could see two little um, heads over here. And if you click on that, it's giving you all of Carolyn's if, um, information and all the headers there too, because sometimes those headers are hard to read. So you could just scroll across and see all that information there. Also, the nice thing about this, if, if you wanted to see who lived in our neighborhood or, or if you knew other families that lived down the street, you can um, move forward on this and move back on the census. So we're gonna start here with first, if you wanted to save this. So again, you can send this um, document home. Again, just enter your two emails and click send, or you can save it to your computer of course, you can ex, uh, uh, expand this page. Doesn't uh, help a whole lot, but a little bit. And then this little box with the arrow, I'm gonna click on that. And the first box here is the details. Now those details was the same information that was on the first page. Um, then I'm gonna click on related. And these are just suggested records that might also be about Caroline. So you could link to these also. And then the last one is the source. Uh, if you're doing true genealogy, you should always list your sources. All right, the next one, if you could see this, it's a little tools, looks like a wrench and a hammer. So I'm gonna click on here. Again, this is where you could print this. I'm going to click on that. Um, you can click the entire page. Uh, you can just zoom a section of it um, and also print the index and source. So. All right, you can rotate the page. Um, you can flip the pages. You can invert the color. A lot of people who have vision problems um, this is easier for them to read this way. And of course, then you could also uh, zoom this with the plus and minus. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back to the home page now. And let's look at some vital records. As I mentioned before, birth, marriage, and death records are known as vital records, and they are important because they are typically created near the time of the event, making them more likely to be accurate. So I'm gonna put Frank Lloyd, right? And I'm gonna put the year he was born just to Help us narrow this down a little bit. I'm sorry. All right. And okay, let's look at this one now. Um, I know 
this is one of his wives. So we're going to click in here. All right, and you could see all the information. Again, over here are those suggested records. And I'm going to scroll down and we're gonna look at his passport application. And again, not a lot of information here. We know this is him because of his residence, but I'm gonna click on here. I'm gonna zoom. Hopefully you can see, but now we can um, see some information about his father, uh, where he was born, um, some addresses uh, that he's an architect. But I want to go to the next page. And I want to show you here. Again. All right, it's telling us how, how tall he was. He had a sloping forehead. He had light brown uh, eyes, a straight and rather prominent nose, a long hair, erect carriage, full lipped, chin not prominent, hair gray, light complected. And then if we scroll down here, there's an actual picture of him. So there's a lot of great information here that wasn't on um, that original uh, landing page. All right, so let's go back to the home page and let's look at some military records. Um, the, there's US records from colonial air to Vietnam. Uh, the types of records you're gonna find here are draft records, service records, pension records, claim records, and some military history. And again, if you live in Lyle, this name, um, will sound familiar. And I'm just gonna put the year he was born and I know he was born in DuPage. Do a search. All right, so now we're seeing his uh, World War II draft records, uh, World War I and some other records, but we're gonna look at this one here. Again, not a lot of information here, but if we view the original document, uh, we're gonna see, uh, this is probably his wife, Anna, um, who his employer was, place of employment, the address was just Front Street. His um, residence just was Lyle Place at that time. And uh, if we go forward, again, this is where we could use that little tool that I'm going to rotate right. And then we could see that he was um, five foot ten and a half, 190 pounds, brown hair, um, brown eyes and gray hair and dark complected. So again, um, I can't stress enough looking at those original documents. All right, let's go back. And let's look at some immigration records. And this is my grandmother. And I know she was born in Italy. And I know this was her right here. All right, now um, I can click on here and I'll be able to see the um, image of the original ship. But if I do that, I'm gonna, yeah, let's just click on that so you can see that. All right, so I'm gonna go back and um, some information, but again, look at this original information because looking at it, again, this is, I know this is hard for you to see, but I can see that 
she came with her mother, Severia, and um, her and her sister. She was 11. Her sister was seven. Um, she also came over with her uncle, Pedro, and it also looks like um, a family friend, probably Angela, uh, because they were all from Sir Sally and they were all headed to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So let's go back. I also wanted to mention that I noticed there was another one and I, I at first I thought it was just a duplicate, uh, but after clicking on it, and looking at it a little bit closer. Again, I know this is hard for you to see, but what I've discovered in looking at this is they were held at Ellis Island for four days. And the reason I can tell it was for four days because uh, the number of meals they received and they were coded LPC which means likely public charge. Um, they were concerned at that time that uh, these women were coming over and they wouldn't be able to support themselves. So they wanted to make sure that there was a husband or um, they weren't going to be a burden on other family members or at, on the community. So. Um, I'm not sure what happened here because her husband was here already. So it could have been a medical reason that they were held. Maybe they were sick or maybe he didn't get there in time. Um, I'm not sure, but you could imagine a, a little seven-year-old and 11-year-old, how scared they would have been um, at that time. All right. Let's go back to the home page here. I also wanted to show you this. Now, if you click on search here, all categories, and you really want to narrow your search down. Let's say you're looking for some relatives um, from Ireland. So I'm going to click on Europe. I'm going to click on Ireland. And this is going to tell me all the data sets that are available uh, regarding Ireland. Now, if I click over here where I say, see more about Ireland, I can do a search here. I click search um, so I could put, I'm just gonna put, um, that was my mother's Main name, I'm going to do a search there. And so this is searching all those records. Um, I did take a look at this uh, before. This is was interesting. Interesting. Um, he was arrested. Patrick was arrested. Um, this isn't my relative, but for illegal possession of a basket. Uh, I tried to look at the record a little bit closer to see uh, how long he was imprisoned for that, uh, but I had a, a hard time reading it. But um, yeah, some of these were uh, uh, pretty sad why they were um, arrested. So, all right, let's go back to the home page. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, this is just a fun thing. Uh, let's go to new collections. And then I'm going to click on pictures. And then you can look to see if your yearbook has been scanned into here. So I did look for mine. It wasn't in there. Thank goodness. Uh, but then you could look to see the schools in that town. And I went to Queen of Peace. And those are the years, um, the, the yearbooks that are in there. But that happened to be my cousin. I know she won't mind. And then I did 
did a search. And so um, there's her record there. And that's her picture. And now if we click on that, it's going to take us to the yearbook. And then you could scroll through the yearbook. So that's just a, a fun thing to do. All right. Let's see. All right. So um, let's start now. I want to go to... Um, I'm sorry, I want to go now to Heritage Quest. Let's see. Let's, oh, let's use this one. I told you there was going to be some glitches, so. <laughs> uh, let's go back. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'll again, click on databases. And while we're here, I just wanted to show you, remember when I was talking about historical newspapers that you have the access to? And here they are, the Chicago Tribune, 1849, some Civil War uh, newspapers, the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, and the Chicago Defender. So um, let's go into um, Heritage Quest now. Again, if you were at home, you'd have to enter your library card number and PIN number, but because I'm in the library, I uh, was able to get right into that. Um, Heritage Quest offers a collection of unique material for researchers with coverage dating back to the late 1700s. As I mentioned before, you can access this database from home. Uh, the collection consists of data sets that are rich in original documents. And as you can see, they're really US focused. All right, so um, we're gonna talk about, because we already talked about the census, we're gonna talk about uh, the family and local history books. We'll talk about revolutionary war records. Again, this obituary is really an index to and uh, obituaries. Uh, before we get started again, I wanna talk about the homepage. Um, again, this search button here, this search button here and here takes you to the same place. Research aids, they're the same as the ancestry ones, just not as many. Uh, the maps here, a little bit different. If I click here, you're going to be able to see how the United States states changed um, through the decades. So I'll click and, and so on. And then also you could click on Illinois. So I'm going to click on Illinois. And this is what it looked like in the 1800s, uh, 1820s, 1840s, and so on. All right, back to the home page. All right, okay. Um, a little bit different, as I mentioned before, with Ancestry, you can search all 10,000 data sets um, simultaneously here. Each one, each data set is searched separately. So here are all the data sets that you can search. Uh, but today we're just going to focus on the history books and our um, Revolutionary War records. All right. Family history books, uh, which includes over 28,000 family histories, local histories, and other books. These are usually family history books written by family members and probably self-published. 
But if your family member was uh, had any interaction with uh, the subject of the biography, um, they might be mentioned in there. So I'm going to put again our. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I'm going to use the Hatch family again. And I know he was born in 1626. So I'm just gonna um, put that in. And we already saw Fairmont. So we'll look at that. Okay, so um, there are some history books about Jonathan Hatch, but I want to look at this one because it does show um, the genealogy of the Hatch family. Jonathan's father was Thomas, who was born in England, as was Jonathan, uh, but then he came with his father. He settled in Barnstable, married a Sarah Rawling, uh, was one of the first settlers um, Jonathan Hatch, and again, here you see this Isaac Robinson, uh, who were neighbors and, again, uh, one of the first settlers of the area. So uh, I always, you know, having dates and um, names and places is great, but when you have a story behind it, um, it just makes everything so much more interesting. So um, that's why I think these history books are so great. Uh, also, let's say um, you can look by publication, but chances are you're not gonna know the name of the book, but um, I'm gonna put, again, Fairmont. And I'm gonna submit. So also like if you were trying to uh, get primary sources, if you were doing research, let's say um, for the Getty, Gettysburg, uh, the Battle of Gettysburg, you could put that in the subject. And so you can get some um, original documents and primary sources from that time period. So we're gonna look at this um, early history of Fairmount. So I can look here. Now the whole book has been scanned in there. I'm just gonna click on the title page and you're gonna see three lectures on the early history. And then you could just scroll forward to read the whole book. But I'm gonna go back. And of course, I'm gonna put our friend um, Jonathan in there and see if we can find any. Um, oops. Information on him. Yeah, there's a lot about Jonathan in the early history um, that we can click in. Uh, I'm not sure what would be the best one here, but they talk about Jonathan and Isaac Robinson built their houses and have their lots and how many acres. And so a lot of great, again, like I said, uh, these stories are great um, if you can uh, find any about your ancestors. All right, let's look at um, the Revolutionary War records. Uh, after the Revolutionary War, the federal government provided three types of pension, one for soldiers disabled, uh, a, a service pension based on time served and a widow's pension. And the government also awarded land to soldiers uh, as an inducement to or as reward for their service. I'm gonna put Alexander Hamilton. And as we know, originally, um, Hamilton turned down his pension, but after he passed away, his uh, wife applied 
for the pension, the widow's pension. Um, and what ha was going on during that time, because they didn't know who fought in the war, you actually had to have supporting documents and letters proving that you were, were in the war. So again, not a lot of information here, um, but if you click on here, uh, W stands for uh, widow's pension and that B LWT stands for a bounty land warrant application. So, so she must have been applying for uh, land. So if we scroll forward, uh, we see here, again, hard to read, but it looks like two years, captain, maybe artillery, and aide de camp to the commander in chief. Um, and so again, a letter from uh, a Clinton, Charles Clinton, on um, Eliza's behalf. Um, this one, I, again, I can't really, you really got to take the time to be able to read these and decipher them. But uh, a lot of great information in these. Um, there's, you know, service records are in there. Sometimes there's Bible records, marriage certificates, uh, even newspaper clippings and wills. So um, a lot of good information in there. All right, so that's it. One of the things I um, talked about that I did wanna show you was um, where you can get some free help from genealogists and research specialists. And um, of course, right now with COVID, uh, you will not be able to do this. Uh, but at the Wheaton Public Library, which is very close to us, you can go there on Thursday evenings uh, from seven to nine. And a representative from the DuPage Gene Genealogical Society is there. And they answer your questions. And also on Wednesday from one to three, uh, the Daughters from the American Revolution. And of course, this is all free. And something that's even better, um, we have a family search in Naperville location where you can actually, again, um, it's not open right now, but once um, everything opens up again, you'll be able to go there. Uh, it's really close. It's close to um, Ogden in Naperville Road. It's in a church. And depending on what day you go there, there are people there that can translate for you. Um, I went there and found some records that were in Italian. Of course, I couldn't read those. Uh, and there was somebody there that can help me. You do not, not have to make an appointment. You can show up. They have a lot of computers there uh, and always uh, very, very helpful people there. Um, I can um, email this to you if you would like, uh, just let me know. And um, and that's it. Is there any questions or anything? If not, um, I guess we'll end it. Um, I can see um, who came, uh, Amat and, and Jay. So um, I will email this to you just in case you want it. I do have your address, uh, email addresses uh, when you signed up. So um, I will get that off to you. And again, um, this has been recorded. It will be on YouTube. So you'll be able to go and um, get a refresher on this if need be. All right. And that's it for the day. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.